the recording started. So I'm waiting for the one person that got booted out to come back in. Mr. Taylor. Um, again, we're in the no talking section. So if you have anything, you type it in chat. Okay, we had no burning questions. And, whoa, I did not mean to do that. that meant to slide up. I'm gonna have to clean my screen, I guess. I'll just go over to the laptop. I wanna see if that person got back in. Okay, we've got it recording. And I'm just going to go ahead and go right now so that we can get the class over with. So there were no burning, nobody had, said they had any burning questions on the homework. For those that have not done the homework yet, it was just to circle graphs that were not proportional relationships. And there were two things that a graph needs to be a proportional relationship. Proportional relationship. The first thing is the graph has to start for our classes at the origin. So at zero, zero. The graph had to start at zero, zero for it to be a proportional relationship. The other thing for us to call it a proportional relationship, it has to be a single straight line. It cannot be a combination of two different straight lines. That one would not be proportional. And if I had a graph that starts at anywhere other than zero and is a straight line, that one also is not proportional because it did not start at zero. So that's the two pieces of information you needed to do that last homework assignment. So we are now on page 105 of your I Ready book. It says Francisca and Elizabeth. Each girl walks for three hours. I want to know how much that they are going to raise in total together. So I'm going to open a poll question in Google Meets. When you are done with it, you're going to click the I'm done option. So I need you to try to figure out how much total money that they're going to make after walking for three hours. So your two options for the, this try-it exercise is the one is going to be, I figured it out. The other option is, I am totally confused. So those are going to be your two options. You either figure it out or I'm totally confused, and that's what you're going to answer in the poll. So for those that just were able to bounce back in, we are on page 105 of your iReady workbook. And we're doing the problem at the top of the page. We want to know how much total money these two girls are going to raise for doing three hours worth of walking. For this little page, you scanned out the. Oh, uh, they they have hard copies. Yeah. Well, so the Pretty publishers cool. gave me this. Oh, okay. So that's I import what I did is I turned their their PowerPoint. I just said save as PNGs. Oh, and I just imported whatever oh, the, the various slides I wanted. That was the quickest way to do it. So I already see some people are done, and I see some people are totally confused. And it's okay to be confused right now, but we'll talk about it. So we've got four of you done. Five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. So it looks like we're about halfway done. Um, for the one that had that question, I saw it up there, but I already talked to somebody. Um, I'll let you do the next one. Next, uh, on class on Wednesday, you can be the one telling me I'm going too fast. So we got six. We're about halfway. As soon as we get one more, I'll continue. Okay, I got another one in there. Somebody who clicked, I figured it out. Um, can you type in chat a basic explanation of what you did to come up with the answer? I'm looking for anybody. See if I can see some pictures of anyone typing in here. Oops, there it went again. I gotta remember, I can't do that on this screen while I'm presenting. Go back over here. Yeah. Okay, so first thing I look at here is each girl walks for three hours. So the whole thing that we have been doing for the last, we're on week six right now, is the biggest thing that we've been trying to find is a unit rate. Okay, and that unit rate is what I'm going to use to help me answer other parts of the question. So I can look at this a whole bunch of different ways. I can say, well, I need six of those because I need six half hours. So if I have three whole hours, how many halves is it? Because that's what it's asking there. I have six of them. Or I have three hours. How many quarters do I have? Well, ask yourself how many quarters are in $3. There are 12 of them. So one way you can do the work is you can think of it that way and do the 2550 times six and the 1450 times 12. Um, so that's one way to do the work, but I've been trying to teach you is how to find the unit rates, okay? And we are trying to find something per something, and we're trying to find the number of dollars per hour each of the girls makes. So the first thing I've been having you do is write down the units that you want your answer to be in. And once you write down the units that you want your answer to be in, you look at the problem and you write the numbers they gave you in the right spots on your fraction. So for Francisca, I'm gonna call her Fran. She earned 25.50 in one half of an hour. And at this point, this is when I said, you can go ahead and stick it into the calculator. Okay, you take the 2550 and you divide it by one half and you put that in the calculator and you get $51 per hour. <coughs> Again, on the unit rate thing, if I wanna figure out how much Liz makes per hour, well, I'm gonna take the $14.50, which is my dollars amount, and divide it by my hours amount, which is one quarter. And this will tell me how much she makes in an hour. 
And so if I multiply it by 4, 40, 56 plus an extra dollar, she makes $57 per hour. And I'm going to verify that with a calculator. Nope, 58. 1450 times 4, 58. Oh, I only added one instead of two. Yeah. So she makes $58 an hour. Once I have these two numbers, there are still two different ways that I can solve this problem. I could multiply Fran's number times three, and then multiply Elizabeth's numbers times three, and then add them up. So what I can do is go three times Fran, plus three times Elizabeth, and that would give me my total. Or I can add them both up and take that answer and multiply it by three. So I could take Fran's number plus Elizabeth's number, add them up, and then when I'm all done adding, multiply it by three. So again, multiple ways that I can come up with the final answer. I'm gonna do it the last way. 51 plus 58 is 109. And so I get 3 times 109 is $327. So those that said they got it, is that what you got, $327? Did anybody get $327? Just type yes, I got it in chat if you got it. Getting nothing in chat. <laughs> okay, I see I see yeses and same answers. It's probably my chat there. Yeah, but a different way. Okay. So we are towards the end of our proportional thinking um, unit. Um, 2550 and 1450. So 2550 in a half hour. And then uh, 1450 in a quarter hour. Some of you are still having issues on trying to think and set up the math problem. If you write the units that you want and then plug the numbers in, you will get that unit rate. For those that are still having problems, I am gonna put Francisca in blue and I'm gonna put Elizabeth in green. So another way that I have shown you how to do these that you've should have been shown in a prior year is you're going to make a double number line. Okay. And the way I'm going to, I'm going to actually, it's two double number lines. The top person, the one in blue, Fran, every half hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tick at one half, then add another half to that gives me one, then one and a half, then two, then two and a half, and then three. Every tick mark that has the same width, she makes $25.50. So you could write $25.50, then the $51, then add another $25.50 to that, which would be $76.50, then $102, then add another $25.50 is $127.50, and then uh, 153. So all I did to go to each number, I was just adding $25.50 each time, which again, I added it six times, which is just multiplying it by six. For Liz, instead of doing my marks at a half, I would do them at a quarter. I would do one quarter, one half, three quarters, one, and then once I get the one number, it's kind of easy to get the two and three because you just add the one to the, itself to get the two, and then you add it again to get the three. So 1450, 29, uh, 4350, 58, add 58 to itself, I get 116, add another 58 is 164. And now I know how much they each make in three hours, and that's gonna give me my zero, zero, 
seven, 11, $317. So again, there are various ways to solve it. I am trying to get you to use the unit rate method because that unit rate is my number that I'm using when I write an equation. For example, if I want Fran's money, in order to get Fran's money, I take 51 times the number of hours that she walks. For Liz's money, I take 58 times the number of hours she walks. So that unit rate is also the number that we use when we write our proportional equation. So it's also, um, we also talked about it that if I'm using these rates in, in a proportional way, it also can be considered a scale factor when I'm making things bigger or smaller. So do question number six, which should be a couple pages after our last one. So we're on question number six. At a certain bookstore, you get a $5 coupon for every four books you buy. What is the least number of books you can buy to get $15 in coupons? Okay, somebody said I was going too fast. On the previous screen, those notes are gonna be put into, um, that double number line is gonna be put into your Google Classroom for you. I, um, I went slow for the first time I did it using the unit rates, but when I'm showing you other methods that you're gonna be able to get from the Google Classroom, I may speed up a little bit. Um, Um, so, and I did have somebody that was booted out that said they could not get back in. Oh, they are back in. If it keeps booting you out, the video will get posted later today once I get it downloaded and converted. This question number six is one that I would expect every one of you to be able to give me an answer, but maybe not necessarily show me your work. So I'd expect pretty much everybody to be able to give me an answer, but not necessarily show me your work. So can somebody Please tell me how you would think about going through and answering this question. Can I say it? Type it in chat. We're not. <laughs> okay, I like that. Um, somebody just emailed me another model where they used basically fraction tiles, and it's almost the same way I did with the double number line. That's, so if that's the way you need to do it, that's good. So does somebody have an idea of how I can come up with the answer of how many books I need to buy to get $15 in coupons? So here is one way I could think about it. Every four books gives me a $5 coupon. They gave me that information. $5 coupon for four books. I want to get $15 in coupons. Without me even setting up the, the messy fraction proportion ratio equations, 
I can look at this and I can figure out, I, I get $5 here, but I want 15. What do I have to multiply five by to get to 15? And that chat is not scrolling. I get that three. Good job. So if I multiply the $5 by three to get to 15, what do you think I have to multiply the four by to figure out how many books? Yes, another three. And if I multiply four times three, I get 12 books. So you don't need to set up an equation to solve a lot of these things. You can you just use thinking. This is why I thought almost everybody should be able to come up with the answer because, oh, that's 15 is three times five. So what is four times three? That gives me the 12. So you need a minimum of 12 books. Okay. Well, let's think about this. If I were to ask you another way, how many books could you buy that would give you $15 in coupons? If I just, $15 in coupons is going to be 12, 13, 14, or 15 books. So 12, 13, 14, or 15 books will give you $15 in coupons. The reason why I could not use a unit rate on this one, or the reason why a unit rate is not necessarily the right way to go, if I would have done the $5 per four books, in this case, I would have got a $1.25 coupon per book. The math would have worked out correctly here. I could have taken the $15 divided by the $1.25 and got 12. However, we do not get a $1.25 coupon every single time that I buy a book. What you're actually getting, I'm gonna add another screen here with a little graph for you, just so you guys can understand this. And understand this is a little beyond, this is a little bit different than what we had before. So on the, this axis, I have books. On this axis, I have coupon value. When I, so I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This is $1. Actually, I'm gonna make that $5. $10, 15, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I'll make this one 20. Here's what's really happening. If you buy zero books, you don't get a coupon. If you buy one book, you don't get a coupon. Two, you don't. Three, you don't. And when you get up to just buy that fourth book, you get a coupon worth $5. And you get $5 all the way up to the point where just before your eighth book, you now get a $10 worth of coupons. So you don't have that nice proportional relationship that we had in our previous questions where I just ended up with a, if this was like a previous question, we would have ended up with this straight line that looked like that. But because you have to get that whole fourth book to get that $5 coupon, they're not giving you $1.25 coupons. You, um, what I'm trying to tell you is the equation that you could have come up with, yes, you would have had the right answer, but your thinking may not have been correct to get that right answer. When you get into eighth grade and into high school algebra one, we are going to be talking about these red types of graphs a lot. Um, Right now, we're gonna go back to concentrating about those straight line graphs, but I wanted to show you the difference between what this problem was to what you were used to. I'm gonna walk through this one. Swim team members can race or dive at a meet. It says 18 members race. 
The ratio of racers to divers is six to two. So it says there are six, that's not a number. There are six racers go to two divers. Okay, that's the ratio. It says there are 18 people total. So there are 18 total people, members. How many members are on the team? It says the, um, at a meet, 18 members race, 18 race. So I have the 18 race, which is going to let me know how many divers I have. But that is not the question they are asking. They are asking how many total members. Can we are slow down. Okay, I'm stopping as soon as I write a word, and then you guys are going to solve it. All I'm doing is the setup. Okay? They said a ratio of six racers to two divers. That's in the information they gave you. They tell you that there are 18 racers that are in the meet. You need to tell me how many divers there are. And once you know how many divers there are, you need to tell me the total number of racers and divers. Give you a couple minutes to do this one. The setup is just like one of the previous examples I did. Let me check, I think I got one more. One more. Does somebody have an answer? If so, please type yes in chat. Okay, I got a few people with answers. So I have several people with answers. So what I'm gonna do is, um, the second person who typed yes, can you please, um, okay. Uh, so I see an answer that is not quite the answer. So the last person who typed yes, that gave me a number, you told me the number of divers. I need to find the total of everybody, the racers and the divers. Good one there. They caught it. So I'm going to walk through this one, then I'm going to stop the recording so we can talk out loud, and then we're going to do our last problem. This is just like the previous example, um, one of the previous examples. I can ask myself, what number, easy number, do I multiply by to get from 6 to 18? And there we go, I get the 3. So if I multiply this one by 3, that means to get this number, I also have to multiply the 2 times 3. And that gives me 6. Now, where the answer, the person who typed six, that's 
the part of getting the answer, they want the total number of members, which is 18 plus six, which is 24. That is one way you can do it, okay? I'm gonna show you one other method, and then we're gonna stop the recording, is if I, and again, the stuff I'm writing on the board right now is the exact same thing that was from the problem. There were 18 people that were um, racers. They tell me that I have a six to two. Um, that one won't work. That'll multiply it by three. So, so 18 racers. I can have two. Um, actually, I need to know my, I won't do that for you. We're just going to keep it back at this one. I'll wait till you're in eighth grade to do it the other way. We have not talked about fraction rearranging yet. If you see an easy relationship, that's either an easy thing to go this direction, like, hey, going from six to two this way is dividing by three. I could have gone this way by dividing by three. Or if you see an easy relationship this way, six times what is 18, you can multiply by three. The reason why I'm trying not, I'm not having you set up equations is I want you just to do the visual setup and then see what looks easy for you, okay? The more ways that you can figure out how to do these problems, the easier it is going to be for you. Um, I'm going to read the last question, then I'm going to turn off the mic. Last question is Roberto runs 25 miles. His average speed is 7.4 miles an hour. He takes a break after 13.9 miles. How many more hours does he run? We're going to basically talk about the thinking portion of this problem. I'm not going to come up with an answer by the 